Wish that I could find the words to describe you now As I'm lying next to you and the world goes quiet Wish that I could make you see Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be switching gears up a little bit and I'm going to be getting pretty serious. So this is a topic that isn't easy for me to talk about, but I think it's very important for other parents to hear. My youngest son Bennett was born with a condition called Pierre Robin sequence. Pierre Robin is a condition present at birth where the baby has a smaller than normal lower jaw, a tongue that's placed further back than normal, and an opening at the top of their mouth, which is also called a cleft palate. Babies that are born with this condition commonly have airway obstruction, so this is caused by the tongue falling back into the throat and causing them to choke. So with the world slowly opening back up and having things reopen, surgeries are now being schedule though what this means is Bennett's surgery is going to be coming up anytime so we could receive a call today that his surgery is going to happen next week we don't know the surgery has been pushed because of covid being a parent it's it's really tough to wait for that call i am an absolute emotional disaster even thinking about this but it's something that i need to prepare for and i need to prepare my family for when Bennett was born his cleft palate was missed completely at the hospital not only was his cleft palate missed by doctors and nurses, but his whole condition was missed as well. So we were sent home thinking we had a healthy baby, with the doctors thinking we had a healthy baby. And unfortunately, it wasn't the case. Our family doctor actually discovered the cleft palate during a routine checkup on Bennett. So it was extremely hard to find. Our family doctor even said that he could have went years without them finding it because it was so far back. He also had a, a flap of skin, just a very thin flap of skin covering the cleft palate. So when he was born, he would snort. It sounded like he couldn't breathe. In all reality, it was this little flap of skin going up and down when he was trying to take a breath in or out. So at the hospital, when I gave birth to him, I kept asking them, what is that sound? He's choking, he can't breathe. And all the nurses kept saying to me, and I'm not, bashing nurses at all like I don't even know what I would do without the amazing nurses in our lives right now but the nurses kept reassuring me that everything was fine Bennett was fine he could breathe his oxygen levels were great for the time being but it, it wasn't and as a mom I just knew I just knew something was wrong he sounded like a little pig like a little piggy and although cute as hell we all knew something was wrong <laughs> We immediately contacted the pediatrician and because Bennett was pretty jaundiced and he was underweight and losing weight rapidly, we had to see the pediatrician anyway. So when I brought him in, I asked her to do another exam just to reconfirm that there was actually a cleft palate. Not that I didn't believe our family doctor, but I just wanted this specialist to check and she did find a cleft palate. We were relieved at least that the pediatrician found the cleft palate and we were all on the same page now. She immediately called sick kids and made an appointment for us. Babies with cleft palate have difficulties eating, especially breastfeeding, and I was determined my whole pregnancy that I was gonna breastfeed Bennett because with Finn, my firstborn, it didn't work. He was allergic to um, a protein in my milk and he was just, it just didn't agree with him. So it was really important to me that I breastfed Bennett. So while waiting for sick kids to call us, we had so many challenges with getting Bennett enough food. A lot of times he would eat, whether he was breastfeeding or bottle feeding, and the milk would go in his mouth and directly flow out of his nose because of the hole in the top of his mouth. So it was a challenge for Trevor and myself to make sure he was intaking enough. We were weighing him numerous times a day. We were constantly worried that he was gonna be hospitalized again. So we had to get specialty bottles that you can purchase at SickKids and you can order online. Uh, I believe Amazon has them. And I'll include a picture um, up here so you guys can have a look what it's like. But Bennett did not want to eat from the specialty bottles. He wanted to breastfeed. Um, not only did we have to give him a specialty bottle, but we had to position him differently. So if we had him laying 
laying sideways, how I would feed Finn when he was a baby. He would choke. I had to find special ways to feed him. So we saw a feeding specialist. She helped us with positioning Bennett to eat. So we tried a number of different ways to feed him. We held him upright. We held him on his side. After he ate, we had to hold him up for 30 minutes minimum because babies throw up, right? And Bennett, unfortunately, because of the hole in the top of his mouth, the milk would come out of his nose. It was horrible. So fortunately, he did not need a feeding tube, which we couldn't be happier about. It's heartbreaking to see these little babies and these kids with these feeding tubes. I believe they're called NG tubes, but we were almost, we almost had to get him a feeding tube because his weight just wasn't going up. No matter how much I fed him, no matter how hard I tried, his weight wasn't going up. So we were basically hours, hours away from getting a feeding tube. The doctors decided to give us a few more days and luckily he started regaining weight. We got to avoid that. So after being at home for a week or two, after visiting the pediatrician about the cleft palate, sorry about my voice, I still have laryngitis from my last episode, but I'm struggling through it. I'm motoring through this laryngitis. So yeah, a, about a week after we brought Bennett home from visiting with the pediatrician about the cleft palate issue, I had put him in his baby swing while I did the dishes. So I could see him, he was two feet away from me. He eventually fell asleep and when I looked over at him, he was blue. His tongue was obstructing his airway. It was, it was terrifying. I can't even begin to tell you um, how hard it is to see your baby, to see your baby turn blue and not breathe. So Trevor scooped him out of the baby swing, right away he started patting on his back. He put him, as if he was going to do the Heimlich maneuver, he put him on his belly but upright and started to pat his back and eventually Bennett started to breathe and he woke up. Uh, we rushed him to the hospital and that's when they admitted him. And that's when our lives changed. So over the next few days, they monitored him closely. They kept an eye on his oxygen levels. They kept an eye on the way he was sleeping, his breathing. He was just constantly being watched by us and by the doctors. While being at the hospital, they noticed that his oxygen level would drop when he was sleeping. So not only was that terrifying for us because if Bennett didn't have this blue spell and we didn't bring him to the hospital, he essentially could have suffocated in his sleep. In a way, it's a blessing that we did see him um, have a blue spell, but at the same time, absolutely terrifying as it would be for any parent. Being a parent's hard enough, but to have a baby that um, health issues uh, makes it a little bit harder. <laughs> So we saw numerous doctors, a lot of pediatricians. One doctor we saw um, came in one morning and it was his last shift working. He stood there and he stared at Bennett for a while and I could tell that he was thinking really hard about something. He left the room and he spoke to some of his colleagues and when he came back in, he told us that they thought that Bennett had a condition called Pierre sequence. The word sequence is because it usually follows with a sequence of things. So a small, underdeveloped chin, a cleft palate, and the tongue that falls back, so the breathing obstruction. From there on, we started researching. The doctors educated us on what it meant. Bennett, from this point forward, had to sleep on his stomach every single night. So at this time, he was only, I wanna say he was only about three weeks old, and we were basically living in the hospital now because um, Pierre Robin sequence is actually quite rare, so the doctors wanted to monitor him. They did contact Sick Kids in Toronto. The unit at Sick Kids dedicated just to Pierre Robin patients. And we were on a waiting list. Sick Kids is hard to get into, to get seen. We were in our hospital for about three weeks with Bennett while they tested him, they monitored him. And while being in the hospital, being treated for the Pierre Robin, I don't know if anybody's ever been connected to a monitor at the hospital. So it monitors your oxygen level, but it also monitors your heart. So one of the nurses that was working with us, she noticed that Bennett's heart rate kept going up. Like it kept, it was going crazy. Like his heart rate was fast. I guess, I guess the monitor isn't the best of monitors. So they, they called this nurse, thank God for her, 
she called the doctor right away and the doctor ordered a cardiac monitor for Bennett. So the cardiac monitor monitored his heart rate, um, everything to do with his heart. We had an echocardiogram, so that's when the cardiologist comes in and does an ultrasound of the heart. The echocardiogram went well, so we had him on a Holter monitor, which is another cardiac monitor for 48 hours at a time. So we did this a few times. They ended up discovering that he had what's called SVTs. So SVTs are supraventricle tachycardia. Excuse me if I said that wrong. This is when the baby has episodes which the heart beats abnormally fast. So just by chance, they discovered this and we would not have known again. This was missed at birth. It is true what they say, you have to be the advocate for your kids because it's just scary being a parent because you can't see, you don't know what's going on in your child's body, you know? And it's scary, it's terrifying. So Bennett is now medicated three times a day for his heart problem, or his heart condition, I should say. So with his cleft palate surgery coming up and a pending appointment with a cardiologist at Sick Kids, I'm not sure how to feel with him going under with anesthetic. With whatever's going on with his heart, is it safe? I don't know. It's tough to hand over your baby and trust these doctors are going to do everything possible to keep them safe because as a parent, that's all you want. That's all I want to do. I just want to keep him safe. I just want to keep him safe. I need to put my trust in these doctors and hope that they take care of him. He is the happiest, happiest child. He, like, I can't even put into words. He is always smiling. Nothing ever upsets him. It's tough to see a happy baby go through so much. Along with the heart issues, the Pierre Robin sequence, and the surgery coming up, he also has kidney stones. We don't know why. His calcium was extremely high. We have to get his blood taken every two weeks. They're monitoring the calcium as well and he's seeing a nephrologist for his kidneys to make sure that the kidney stones aren't growing or they're not multiplying. So as of right now, he's okay. It's not causing him pain because it's not obstructing anything. Not only are we trying to mentally prepare ourselves for this surgery coming up, try to physically prepare Bennett because after the surgery, he's not gonna be able to eat solid foods. He's not gonna be able to use a bottle or a soother. He needs to use a special cup. So we've been practicing that with him, but he wants nothing to do with a normal cup. We have a sippy cup that he likes, but again, it's kind of like a bottle. He has to suck on it and that's not going to work after the surgery. And now listen guys, I know that it could be a lot worse. And I know that there are parents all over the world that have to see their child or their children hurting um, in way worse scenarios than what I'm going through. For one reason or another, I think that it's important that we talk about this. And I'm thankful that I have this platform to tell my story and to listen to other stories of parents that have been through similar things. It helps me to know that I'm not alone and I hope that this video helps others to know that they're not alone either. As parents, we have compassion for other parents and we have unconditional love for our children. And I think that that is so powerful. I will be filming Bennett's journey throughout this whole surgery before and after. And I would love for you guys to subscribe and be a part of it. So I just wanna say thank you for listening to my story. It means so much to me and my family. I hope that this can help um, other parents out there. And if anyone's going through similar a similar situation or has been through it already and has any advice for me or Trevor, I would love to hear from you. You can comment down below and I will message you directly or my email is also attached to my YouTube account. Thanks guys.